Hello everybody and welcome once again to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today back in Hay Lower Plantations, which is of course near Hay Hall, which is right over there, way over there in Wigan. And I'm returning to a little area that I covered in my last video, a little area known as the Receptacle Quarry. For those of you who've not seen that video yet, I'll put a link up now for you, so you can go and look at that video. But uh, today's mission is to return to the receptacle quarry and see if we can find any remnants of something that was placed there in 1980 and a little bit of mining history and heritage. Now I'm talking about the last wooden pit headgear in Lancashire. It used to reside in Bispum uh, Brickworks, which is in Billinge, which is now part of Merseyside. And when they level that site, you know, the two corner buildings off, I'll try and put a little photograph in for you now of what it looked like, and I'll put an arrow into where the egg gear was. Now, once that site was levelled, I think there's housing on it now, it was decided to painstakingly dismantle the wooden head gear, save it, and bring it here to Hay. And it was, like I said, it was put in the uh, receptacle quarry. I think they managed to get a grant from the uh, Museum of Science and Industry because there was no lottery grants back in the 80s you know there was no such thing as the National Lottery was there and like I said they brought it there and they put it back and it was there for about a decade but unfortunately it was removed about the 1990s something like that Wigan Council they cited vandalism they said it was uh, getting it was getting you know trash type of thing so they removed it the only part of that now that survives this egg gear is uh, is the wheels apparently the upper Astley Green Colliery, which is a mining museum just on the outskirts of Tilsley over in Manchester Way, which is somewhere that I keep saying I'll visit, but as yet I've not managed to do it. Maybe I'll get Toby in the car one day and go and have a little mooch round. Anyway, getting back to this video, uh, the, this headgear, I'll put a photo in now of it, what it looked like when it was in situ. Like I said, that was placed here in 1980. Now, the idea of it was to just give you an idea of what it would look like. There was no uh, there was no shaft, they didn't dig a shaft or anything like that, they just placed it on brick plinths. Now, as I say, it's gone today. Um, the area was turned into a bit of a climbing area, as I showed you in my last video. But I'm just wondering if there's any little remnants of that around. So what we're going to do now, we're going to use some uh, archaeological you know, Tony Robinson-esque type things by trying to locate where it is and we're going to start by using an original photograph when I get in there but what I want you to do, I'm going to show you something in a minute and I want you to sort of burn that to your memory and uh, and use that as a reference point so I'll whip the camera around now, show you a reference point and then I want you to burn that to memory and then we'll make our way through the woods and into the receptacle quarry Okay folks, now this is what we're going to use as our reference point. That little row of cottages there is known as the Alms Houses. And they date from about 1790 I believe. Originally there was just two cottages there. But now there's three. And what I want you to take particular notice of is those little chimneys there on the top on that roof line. Because that's what we're going to use as our reference point when we get inside the quarry. And we take a look at one of the original photographs which will sort of show us roughly what area the pit head gear was actually set up in because we've got to bear in mind that there's been a lot of tree growth and that in the past 30 odd years so we'll be using that as our little reference point so burn that image to memory or you can just quite simply rewind this video it's up to you we're now going to make our way that away along that path there past little Lucy and Rosie and make our way around to the quarry so off we go so as we make our way through the woods towards the receptacle quarry I'll do a little bit of a, a little bit of a chat about how that pit head gear made its way to Wigan now a fellow by the name of uh, Donald Anderson was very instrumental in getting the head gear you know brought here to Wigan he sort of got together with Wigan Council and Gil Swift he was the director of leisure at the time and they managed to secure the grant and get it brought here as a little bit of a heritage thing which was a good thing really you know um, it's always nice to try and 
keep hold of certain aspects of our heritage, very easy to lose them. And sadly today, they don't know what's happened to it, it's just been lost. As I said, the uh, metal parts, you know, the wheels and the supports for the wheels, those have ended up at Astley Green, but the actual wooden framework, they don't know what's happened to it. There's been many stories about what happened to it. Some say that that too ended up at Astley Green, it just never got re-erected. Others state that the wooden parts of it ended up in a back lot area on property here at A Hall and just got forgotten about. And the saddest one is that they used to have annual bonfires up here uh, at Hall. The Wigan Council had put on an annual bonfire in the days before Contessa Hotels took A Hall over. And one story I heard is that uh, it ended up on one of them, which would be really sad. Mind you, it would have burned for quite a while because I believe it was built out of pitch pan, which is very hard, very hard wood. They use it for railway sleepers and things like that. So it would have made a good fire at least, but uh, it's such a shame really if that is what has happened to it. Anyway, we're going to make our way through this path here now. Down onto the main pad and into the receptacle quarry. Um, so now nice day today, so I thought why not bring the girls out and uh, we'll do this little video. You know, I uh, hope you enjoyed the last couple of videos that I've been doing here from A-Hall. Because it is a fascinating park and as Wiganers I must admit, sadly, we don't realise what we've got on our own doorstep. You know, isn't that always the case really? But it is a beautiful park this. And the 250 acres of woodland that we can all go and have a little mooch around. And it's free, all you need is Shanks Pony. And uh, get yourself out and about. Which is what we're doing now. Right, I'm going to switch the camera off because this footpath here is a little bit muddy and uh, I want to make sure I don't end up, you know, bum over pap type of thing. Right, well I've got past that little bit of a muddy part of the footpath, it's quite dry here now. So uh, you can join me again. As I said, there's lots of history in this park. You know, I believe there's a lost canal in here from the 1700s, which we may cover one day. There's a former railway line from the 1800s, that runs through here. And uh, it's littered with all kinds of mine shafts, because when this was the Earl of Balcaris land, obviously that's how they generated income, to keep them in the lap of luxury and life that they become accustomed to. They used all the minerals and the resources that was on their estate, like many other landed gentry did. And uh, that's what kept them in a in a nice lifestyle. I suppose it started getting hard for landowners, though, as that started drying up. You know, they found themselves with all these huge lands and big taxes. That's how a lot of them lost their lands. I think myself, that's probably how the Earl of Balcaris, slash Earl of Crawford, I think he found himself in that sort of predicament and thought to himself, it's just easier to sell the land off and... Uh, and rid myself of a debt type of thing. A financial millstone around his neck. Anyway. We're now here at Devil's Canyon. Slash. Slash the receptacle quarry. Back once again. And I think. From memory here. We've actually. We've actually found where it was. So what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and show you the original photograph now and then I'm going to try and do a, a then and now as best I can as you can see here just behind me lots of undergrowth lots of uh, growth in here now you know this has simply got massively overgrown but I'm hoping that there's at least some remnants of it you know perhaps those brick piers are still here somewhere you know who knows who knows anyway We'll, uh, we'll make our way over there, and then we'll try and do the then and now shot, I think. And then we'll have a little mooch around, because uh, this is quite quite uh, interesting, really. Because I can sort of see the shape of where that uh, headgear was. Right, I'll whip the camera around, and, uh, and we'll have a little mooch around, shall we? Okay, folks, well, this is it. I think that headgear was in this area here. And the reason for that... Is if you look in the top left hand corner of your screen and you look very closely you should see those chimneys on the roof line of the almshouses 
that I mentioned earlier that you should have uh, burned to your memory banks. Now I will put in the old photograph and you should be able to see those chimneys ringed in red on the top left hand corner of the screen. And here we are back in present day. So yes, I think it was in this little clearing here. So what we're going to do now, we're going to make our way down on the footpath there. And we'll have a mooch around in the undergrowth there and see if we can find anything, any remnants from that headgear. With a bit of luck we'll be able to find some stumps from the old fencing or something like that. But yes, definitely, in my opinion, this is the area where that headgear once stood. So, let's make our way down there now. Come on Lucy, no time for laying about. So here we are again, on the main path. Back there is the climbing area that I showed you in my last video. And here we are, making our way in to where that headgear once stood. Now, like I said, there's no actual shaft, so we're quite safe from falling in and yep we found it folks ta-da look at that here's the brickwork now all overgrown covered but here are the plinths they're still here folks Just make that out there, overgrown. Here they are. Here's where the ironwork would have sat, across to the other one. And the headgear would have been way above us there. Make our way through. Very easily past this, very easily. There's no fence around it today. I don't know what this brickwork here, it's like a circular though. It's going around where Rosie is. Fortunately, the camera isn't really doing this justice. But yeah. Here's the two plinths, overgrown. And those are the far ones that it would have stretched over to. Now what's happened to the timber frame of this, who knows? But it's still here, all these years on. 40 years after it was built, it's still here. There's the brickwork. Amazing, really amazing. There's now trees growing out of it, it's, it's got that old and dilapidated. Hello Lucy. Make our way around here, around the back of it. Some rubble there. Yeah, you can still see them. I'll try and get a really good shot of it. And you can see what we're looking at. There they are. These were built. And all this area had been cleared out, I think, so that they could put this here. That there is a remnant of some of the fencing that was around. There we go, there's one of the other fence posts still stuck up. Just rotted away there. There. I mean, this area, I think I estimated from the photograph that it covered so many fence panels, six by six. 
So what you was looking at back in the day, really, in this area, was a 36 foot square that had just been hollowed out to make way for this. Having to really bend low here to get through. There's the other, the other little brick stump that this would have sat on. And there's a lot of ivy on them now. Pull some of that off. Expose some of this. This brickwork. There you can see it. They're still in here. They're very intact, really. That post there is from the climbing equipment. As you'll recall from that other video, if you've watched it, I did a little bit of a segment on that. And that's how I found these brick posts where this shaft once was. It's through there. You can see it again. And that's how I found these. I noticed them and I put them in the video. But I didn't really do anything on them, you know, because it didn't really fit in and I didn't know what they was. They just looked like a wall or a concrete block to me. But yep, that's what these are, overgrown 40 years later. Those are the brick plinths from that shaft. I'm going to make my way back down now. And uh, I'll give you my theory as why I think this was removed. Here we are, back on the main path. So the next question is, why did Wigan Council choose to remove it? Well, as I said, as we made our way into this area, officially, they cited vandalism as being the main cause, as they took it down and got rid of it. But to be honest with you, I think they wanted to repurpose this area. By the time of the 1990s, 1991, Gil Swift had departed as Director of Leisure. He'd moved on to uh, his retirement and he had a retirement, I believe, up until about 2003 when he sadly passed away. And I think his successor wanted to change this area into the adventure climbing area. Uh, regarding heritage and things like that, they had the Wigan Pier experience, which I've done a bit of a video on some of the remnants from that, which I'll put a link up now for you. You can go and have a look at that video. But that had kicked off, so that's where you went for your heritage fix back in the 90s. And like I said, I think they wanted to change this area into the climbing area that it became. Now, in that other video that I did, I estimated that all this equipment that's here in the uh, quarry area was from the 2000s. Well, I was out by at least five years. How do I know that uh, this equipment dates from no later than 1995? Well, I'll show you, Hot Potters. We're going to use uh, Sherlock Holmes type detective skills. I'm going to show you a piece of that equipment now, a little sign, and I'll explain now I know that this is no older than 1995. So I'll whip the camera around now and explain for you. Now, this is a little sign at the foot of some of uh, that former equipment. As you can see, it says on it, The Explorer's Challenge. Now, that's the name of the type of equipment. And it was made by Recreational Supply Services Limited, which went out of business in 2014. But what's really interesting is that number there. As you'll see, 0784-483851. Now, that's not a mobile phone number, which I originally thought it was. What that actually is, is a landline number. And if you was born after 1995, you'll probably not remember that uh, the dialing codes in the UK didn't have a one in. They only started putting the one in British Telecom after 1995. So that's how we can date how all this equipment was. So folks, it's as simple as that. That's how we can actually date these pieces of equipment like the one behind me to no later than 1995. The manufacturer's plate didn't have in it a one in the dialing code. I actually remember them, I'm showing my age here now, I actually remember British Telecom bringing that campaign out. I know the marketing team must have had an hard time thinking up a name for that marketing campaign because they called it the Big One, get it? But moving back to why this uh, headgear was removed from this area, 
I think simply Wigan Council did want to rebrand and repurpose the area. And if they'd have left that headgear there, as magnificent as it would have looked, it would have been a throwback to the old heritage that had been around here. And they did want people to start making their way down to Wigan Pier for the Wigan Pier experience. That was where you was going to get your heritage fix if you was a Wiganer. And they just wanted to make this area into an adventure area, which they did. Sadly, it all lies abandoned today, which is a great shame, really, because they've lost a piece of man in heritage, though. As I said, it was the last wooden pit headgear, albeit man in clay and not coal. But there you go. I suppose they thought they was doing the right thing at the time, Wigan Council. You'll probably find, as well, if you look back at the details of that grant that they got from the Museum of Science and Industry, that there was a little clause in it somewhere that stated if they give Wigan Council the money to re-erect that headgear down here, it had to stay in place for so long. Probably ten years. The dates would certainly work out. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. That's going to do it for today. I'm going to uh, end this video at this point. We're going to get back to the jalopy, myself and the girls. I've not been in the captain's chair of the old jalopy for a while, so it's been nice getting out in the old girl again. But, before I go... I don't think it's right that Wigan Council got rid of that headgear that would have stood behind me. So using the magic of the internet, I'm going to put it back for you and I'm going to leave it, this video, with that closing shot. So, until the next time, when I'm out and about again, maybe with the girls, maybe with little Toby, maybe with Mrs H, who knows, it is bye-bye for now.